Good evening. Christopher Bruce put on quite the show in a Minnehaha County courtroom this week. He even swore at the judge in his stalking case and told him the judge didn't have jurisdiction over him. Bruce calls himself the living man and identifies as a sovereign national. Kelland's Angela Kennecke has been looking into Bruce's tumultuous background with the government and the court system. She joins us now with what she has uncovered. Angela? Well, Bruce is part of an or unorganized movement of extremists known as sovereign citizens. They are people who don't think the law applies to them, whether that's getting a driver's license or paying taxes. Bruce wrote in one filing that Iowa courts have no jurisdiction over him unless God's laws are broken. Bruce lived in Polk County, Iowa, before threatening Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tenhaken. Kettleman investigates followed the internet trail of Christopher Bruce from blogs to YouTube videos. In one video, he records himself calling the FBI and becomes agitated while on hold. We are experiencing unusually high call volume. I'm sure you are, you. He does get through to an agent. My name is Christopher Bruce, and I have emailed over 8,000 employees in LA County to tell them to give a friend of mine's kid back. And then they went and arrested him and took his children. Now, you want to explain to me how that works? Okay, really, sir, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about I emailed 8,146 employees in LA. Now, you see that? This is the reaction I get. The FBI categorizes sovereign citizens as a domestic extremist movement. In February of this year, sovereign citizen Dennis Dwayne Van threatened officers with a pig shaped device during a four hour standoff in a Maplewood, Minnesota grocery store parking lot. A lot of these people are driven by conspiracy theories, financial schemes, believe the government's out to get them. Lincoln County State's Attorney Tom Woolman has dealt with as many as 20 cases of so called sovereign citizens. He showed us one folder of paperwork and responses filed by one convicted of threatening a federal judge. And basically, they become paper terrorists because they just file and file and file all these documents that really don't amount to anything. Terry Simonick sent this letter to Woolman after his fifth DWI conviction in 2006. Simonick writes, the charges against him were fraudulent and he has no contract with the state of South Dakota. Simonick was ticketed in Lyon County, Iowa, just a couple of months ago for driving with a suspended license and failing to use the device on his car to test for alcohol. They believe that, that they are untouchable and that they are not subject to our laws and not subject to the jurisdiction of our courts. Former state lawmaker and convicted child sex offender Ted Clout also declared himself a sovereign citizen while in prison for his crime. Clout told Kettleman News we couldn't use his name anymore because it's copyrighted. Woolman says it's a tactic often used by these extremists. The Adrian Saad case of tax evasion made headlines in 2014. Woolman says Jerry Adrian and his son Jared, who ran the longtime Harrisburg business, were sovereign citizens who didn't believe they had to pay taxes. It's not a successful scheme. It is just that. It's a scheme. And, and it's a scheme to financially defraud or, or try and step away from your financial obligations, and, it, and it's never successful. I spoke to the Des Moines, Iowa grandmother today, whom Bruce was found guilty of stalking in 2015. She told me he threatened to kill her and burn down her house, and that he did spend some time in prison for those threats. We checked, and there are at least two dozen court cases against Bruce in Polk County alone.